Welcome to our um, introduction to darning class. I'm going to show you a few different techniques. Um, these are all visible darning, um, visible mending, uh, so you can see the repair. But if you want to do them invisibly, um, you just use a matching thread. But I'll talk you through that as we go. When you are darning, um, it's important to choose the right tools. Um, you're going to need a needle, so you can get darning needles that are kind of blunt on the end. I've got a, I've got a long, um, sharp one here, but that'll be fine. I can get my wool through here. I've also got a slightly thinner one because I'm going to do some with thinner wool. So often you need something to place your darning over as you're doing it. Um, you can get darning mushrooms. Um, but if you don't have one of these, I mean you can pick them up quite cheap on eBay and things like that. I often use jam jar lids, if you've got like a hard orange or like a pomegranate hard fruit you could use that, it's quite nice to have the curved surface sometimes. Um, I've got a little kind of shaped magnet here that's got a little repair on it as well, um, but that's quite a good kind of domed shape to use. And then you need, um, it's good to have an elastic band, or if you don't have an elastic band, a hair band. So an important thing to think about when you're darning is um, what you're darning onto. So these days we have a lot of um, fabrics that are cotton, like socks are often cotton. Um, you might get woolly things that are acrylic or you might um, have wool, items made of real wool. They're often things that have holes in um, because of moths. Um, and when you're choosing what you're going to darn it with, it's important to think about... Um, what the what the thread or yarn that you're using is made of and the thickness of it. So something like this, um, I would darn with, I've, this is acrylic, so I would darn with some kind of thickish acrylic wool. Um, these socks here, they're quite thin, so I might use some embroidery thread and I might even split the thread when I do it. You could, if you've got even thinner socks, use um, like sewing machine thread. If you have wool items, I would use wool yarn with it because you want the fabrics to react in the same way. Sometimes they might wash differently, um, and it's good also for comfort and look. It, they don't have to be like completely matching. Um, on this thin kind of jumper. It does have thinner thread, and I've just used embroidery thread here, but it works quite well. I think if I'd have used this, it would have been too heavy, and that it can also strain the fabric and make um, holes in, in a kind of bigger area as well. So the first bit of darning um, I'm going to show you is what I call traditional darning. Um, and you stitch from the back, around the hole, and then you kind of fill fill the hole like that. Some people, you can stitch from the front, um, normally it's done from the back, but if you prefer the look of it on the, on the front, you could do it on the front. Um, and I'm going to do it with a sock, since that is one of the things that we do um, end up with a lot of holes. They're worth repairing. I think socks can be so cheap these days, um, but, you know, just because it's cheap doesn't mean it, it doesn't, doesn't deserve to be worn for longer. Um, I'm going to do this little hole because I'm not that nice, my boyfriend. I'm going to teach my boyfriend how to darn and he can do the other one. So here's the little hole that I'm going to repair on the sock. So I'm going to turn it inside out. And then put my little dish in there and you don't want to pull it too tight you don't want to be making the hole bigger than it is because then you get um, you kind of stress it a bit so you just want to kind of have it so it's covering the hole and then use your elastic band I've got my little hair band to put it over like this so I think this is going to look quite nice in this blue embroidery thread. Um, 
but I think the thread is a bit thick on its own so I'm just going to split my embroidery thread obviously you don't have to do this if you think it's okay or if you're using wool whatever yarn you're using I'm going to split it in half so I've got three I'm just going to use this thinner needle here thread my needle and my top tip for threading a needle is to pinch the thread between the or your or your um wool yarn in between your thumb and your finger and then lower the needle onto the thread um, you could also use a needle threader if you've got one if you're finding it hard um, so what you want to do is kind of follow the the line of the the threads that are already there and you're gonna go a little bit bigger than the hole because if you just repaired the hole you'd end up kind of get, putting more strain on these bits and it'll just rip again so um you want to go a little bit bigger if you've got like a maybe at the heel or something if it's worn further um then do all of the worn worn area but actually this is just a little clean kind of hole so I'm just going to start kind of here-ish and have a kind of grid in your head you don't have to stick rigidly to it but so we're going to start here and what you don't need to tie a knot and what you want to do if you've got really thin fabric it's really hard to do this but especially if you're doing um, invisible darning you want to try and only catch the kind of threads that are on the back side so when we turn it over you shouldn't see too much thread on the on this outer side. If a few stitches get through, like it's okay. Doesn't matter, does it? Because especially if you're doing grey and it's gonna blend in, um it wouldn't matter. But yeah, you're trying to keep these ones, the exter the ones that aren't in the hole, kind of above just on the underside. And you don't tie a knot. You literally just leave this here, because what we do is weave it in at the end you're going to go slightly past the top of the hole then you're going to come back down next to it so it's almost like you're just doing little running stitches but I'm just trying to catch it in the bobbly bits this bit's actually a bit worn here, so good job we're going a bit further. And what you want to do is leave a little loop here, like this, on the top and the bottom as you're going. Um, because that, when the, can you see, when the sock moves, or whatever you're darning, um, it has a little freedom to not, if you did it really rigid and really tight it would, um, again, it could stress the hole and make the situation worse so you want to leave your thread reasonably loose in the knit Ooh. And if you pull it too tight, like I did there, just get your needle in and pull it out. There we go. That's better. So you've got, it's just quite a gentle thing, darning. When you get to the hole, you just jump, it's like a bridge, you're just jumping over it like that. So I think this is the most... basic darning really and don't worry that these look a bit loose that's how it's meant to be 
and then when you get past the hole you're going to go back to doing this little kind of in and out okay I think that's enough so leave your thread long not too long it doesn't need to be that long and I would cut don't don't go straight onto the second side do cut cut that away um, and that but then leave it long because we're going to weave it in later so now we've got our vertical lines that way um, I'm going to work on the horizontal ones so um, what you're going to do is again start a little bit out from um, where you were. I'm doing mine in, in a different colour um, so you can see it if you, if you wanted you could do it in the same colour that you did the other lines or you can obviously do it in the same colour as your sock. I'm going to start actually the whole kind of starts there so I'm going to go a little bit further out. Um, my sock's quite thin, I've not got the kind of natural um, place where I can go in and out of the fabric on this way. So you might end up seeing a bit more of the green thread on the front, but that's okay. Oh, leave that a little bit longer so you can thread it with a needle. So you can go, you're kind of going in and out of the fabric and the threads that you've just done. When you get to the hole, then you're weaving in and out of those threads that you used that kind of created a bridge earlier. So you're going over, under, over, under. Again, leave your... Don't pull your threads too tight. And try and alternate what you did last. So now I need to go over that one, under that one. Make sure that the threads are, are kind of, you're doing the threads quite close together. It doesn't matter if there's a few gaps because it gives it the, a bit of movement, but and the more you do it, the, the the kind of more you practice, the better you'll get at doing it. And it's a, it is a slow process. It's not it's not something to rush. You've got to really kind of take a bit of care and attention with your stitches. And I'm going to go a little bit further than the hole this way as well. To get rid of these tails, you're just going to weave them in. So just follow, almost following one of the other blue lines. Just trying to get it kind of lost. And once you've done that, if you cut it off, because the tension that they kind of all the threads hold against each other we'll, we'll keep that in and do the same for all of them the reason why we don't do a knot is to give um, the fabric as much freedom as possible to wiggle and jiggle as you wear it and also because knots would be a bit uncomfortable as well There we go. The moment of truth. So we've got our little patch on the inside. I quite like the look of that, it looks nice. And it's quite flat because it's a very similar size to the 
with the, the, the knit of the sock and then there's the, the outside so it's nice and hard wearing a bit further than where the hole was. This kind of darning is shaped darning so you create a grid on top of your hole like this and um, so the holes on the back and then you create a grid and you can create any shape you want you could do it like a square is quite a good one to start with and a little triangle here you could do a heart shape um, anything you want so this is a visible mending technique um, you could do it in a matching colour um, but it's not going to blend in because it sits on top of the the design sits on top of the fabric um, for shaped darning, I think shaped darning is quite a good one to do on non-stretch fabrics because um, it's not got a lot of give to it. It's okay on stretchy fabrics, but uh, probably one of the other methods is, a, is is better on stretchy. But this one, you can kind of create um, a shape. You're almost creating a grid that sits on top of the hole. So I've got a teeny tiny hole here. And what I'm going to do, I've got this pen that irons out, um, but I'm going to draw the shape that I want to do on the back. So I'm going to do a little triangle. So you do any shape you want. A square is quite a good shape to start with because obviously it's a natural grid but I'm going to do a little triangle like this and you want to do a stitch around the outside of it. Um, from the back where you can see your drawing. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is just um, so we've got something to follow from the front. If you haven't got, I've got a pen that irons out here, but if you haven't got that you could use a bit of chalk. Um, if, you're, if you're using fabric that you can't draw on you might want to just do it freehand, which is a bit scarier, but not impossible. So then you've got the shape to follow on the outside. So I'm just going to take my needle to the front now and then I'm going to put it onto my, if I had a darning mushroom I might use that but I'm going to use this little lid. So if you're using non-stretch fabric, there's less of a risk of you distorting the hole. So, but you still want to hold the fabric taut as you sew. So then what we're going to do, um, we kind of have to create warp and, and weft threads. If you know what weaving is, warp threads go up and down, weft threads go right to left. So you're kind of creating a warp here. And I tend to go a little bit outside of my grid so you can't see the grid at the end so my thread my stitches are going to start here and then I'm going to work my way down the threads want to end up you want them to end up quite close together so if you can get your needle in and do it like that, it's good. But the other thing you can do is do bigger gaps because that's easier to stitch. So say we we're going to do the one there. a wonky one whoops if you go wrong just take your needle off take your thread out and start again so you want to be going up in as straight lines as you can Got 
to the end and where you've left these bigger gaps you kind of come back down and fill them in. And I always think the um, gap should be about the width of the thread. I'm just going to take my needle out like this because I'm going to change colour. So I'm going to take my needle over there. I've just gone underneath and out there. And I'm going to cut that a little bit now, but I'm going to weave it in later. So just leave that end. So once you've got your threads going the one way, you need to do the threads going the other way. So I've changed colours. Um, you could use same colour, you could use the same colour as your fabric, whatever style you're going for. I'm going to leave it there, weave that in later, and then you're going to weave in and out of the shape, like that. So I'm going to do one row that way. Then when you come back down, you alternate what you just did. So that one went over, going over, under. And I just catch it at the bottom or on each side in the fabric. So I know that it's kind of secure. And just pull them closer together. So I'm going through the fabric at the end and then alternating again. So what I'd quite like to do here is change colour. So I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna go back down one more. And then I'm just gonna go through the fabric with my thread again, leave that over there. Start again, leave the thread long and just keep going with your overs and unders. Just catching it at the top there. I love this little triangle. I'm gonna have to do this on a real item. Okay, so when you got to the end, <gasps> I love that, it's got a lot of character, um, take it off, can you see there's not a lot going on at the back here, um, take your threads and if we just move them to the back, and then obviously you haven't woven in this fabric here so I'm just going to do a few stitches along kind of hiding it in the back and then back the other way you're just securing it but without a knot I'm just going to cut that off close to there and bring each of these back and do the same. You could do this finishing off a bit neater than I am, but that's up to you. So you can also weave these in on the outside, just lose them kind of in the weave. There we have it, our little shaped darning that covers our hole and reinforces it. This bit of darning um, is what I call kind of grid darning. So what you do is you, you um, sew from the front um, and you kind of continue your threads up to make them decorative. I've done an even bigger one here in the armpit of this. I had quite big holes 
Oh, I've not woven in all my ends. I had quite big holes in the um, armpits of this cardigan, and I just was practicing with it. I didn't know if it would work, but I think it's come out really nice. Um, this kind of grid darning, and you just change colour as you go along to um, create this kind of checkerboard effect. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of this, but I'll just show you how I start and end it. So, if we've got a little hole here, you want to put it over something to darn over. Might be a bit small, but we can see. And what you want to really think about is um, the size of your stitches. So I'm going to start here. I'm trying to keep my stitches the same length as I go out. And then at the ends here, so I'm going to go in again, and then I'm going to go under the wool to come back out a stitch length away. And then I'm going to try and get my stitches really neatly in the same lines as I did the other ones. And you could take some out longer if you wanted to, that could be an effect. When you get to the middle, you jump over the bridge. So I guess it's just a case of taking a bit more care and attention with the design. that you're doing. So I could change colour now. And it's also this kind of hidden junction, so you're hiding the junction that you're taking underneath and then you're following the same line as we go down. So on these you can see I've kind of stopped um, Mine, I'm not the neatest stitcher, so it's the other one. There's one here. So I've intentionally um, gone under a little line, under a little line, and then my junction is here, and I come back down. So that's a kind of grid garning. And then you follow the same... Um, techniques that we've spoken about before where you're going over under over under and weaving in the ends.